So basically today we're going to take a look at a different type of firewall you can put into your home lab and we're going to use a Sophist firewall home edition for your home lab. If you have PFSense it's a great tool you can use in replace of that or if you want to test different devices that you want to set up at home. Unlike traditional firewalls, Sophist doesn't just focus on blocking or allowing data packets based on predefined rules. It offers a comprehensive suite of advanced security features designed to protect your home network with various threats. This includes web security, application control, URL filtering, and anti-malware, just to name a few. All right, so a couple of reasons why we're gonna install this and test this out in our home lab. Basically, it actually is very user-friendly. You can, this can be ran on a virtual machine or physical hardware that you might have. So if you have a little laptop or even a little mini Raspberry Pi you have set up, you can run it off that. If you have Proxmox ready, you can actually create a VM specifically for this application, which is what we're gonna do during this test. Another aspect of this, another key feature that we have here is traffic shaping, which allows you to focus the traffic that you want for your home at specific applications to be diverted from your home users who are using streaming consoles, Netflix, Hulu, all of that. So you can actually differentiate how much data is going into what application in your home as needed. All right, so for us to get this up and running, first thing we're gonna do is kind of set up. All right, so go ahead, hit the download button, fill out some information, and from there, you're gonna have a file that's roughly about 700 megabytes of an ISO. So at this point, we're going to open up Proxmox and then get that uploaded into there and then verify our settings for it. So we're gonna walk through this together. All right, one thing we're gonna do here, once the file is downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and open up our Proxmox, get to the download section, connect that, and upload our file as needed. Okay, for those who have an issue transferring the file over to Proxmox, you can actually use WinSet to connect into it using your code, access the file path right here, drop your ISO into it, and if you go ahead back into this page and refresh, you should now see your new updated um, Sophist firewall ISO that we're gonna need to create this VM. So on Proxmox to create this, we're going to go through the following. Let's give it, let's say, what is it, 20 for a fire, firewall, I'll call this one here. The title of that correct, so I don't know what to refer to it as. Go ahead, next. Our VM's gonna be local. We're gonna locate our file here. It's gonna be an ISO we're gonna be using for it. Uh, leave everything default. I don't think we're should run into an issue. Throw our files into the virtual ISO. Let's give it, I usually give stuff about 40 gigs of RAM to kind of, to usually give things about 40 gigs of RAM to make sure that's working okay. You know, the, and then probably four, leave it at about two cores. Also, hardware requirements should indicate that it shouldn't exceed past four cores and six gigs of RAMs. Okay, so we're back here with two cores. We're going to double this, so 4096. Our machine should be able to handle it, leave everything as is. We're gonna leave it as is. We're, we're gonna VLAN tag it down the line. Uh, let's see, everything should be finished. Let's get it created. All right, looks like our VM has already been created. So we're going to launch that. All right, so we're going to open up our console. We're going to fire it up, boot from the CD-ROM that we installed to get this going successfully. So we're gonna follow through the menu here as we're seeing the options for it to do. It's install it, cleared cache, very simple steps here. Go ahead, hit a Y, hit enter for reboot, press Y, it should indicate what we're trying to do, and then just do a reboot. And then, oh, so you have to indicate Y twice for it to get the reboot, just a heads up. All right, so once we're booted into it, we're going to click on the option here, let that load. So your default password is gonna be admin when you're trying to log into this page as we just saw. And the only thing we really wanna take a look at here is the network configuration. So we have an IP to connect to the GUI from, from within the console. So let's go ahead and click on one to set that network info, take a look what it's configured to. Interface configuration, it is set on our private network. So we should be able to access it from this, uh, this gateway right here. All right, so once we get our IPs all updated, we're just gonna leave it everything alone. We're gonna actually continue the rest of this configuration within the browser. So take the IP that we had set up, and from there, we'll open up a new browser and be able to log in. So we'll do the initial steps, log in through this, go through the, we're gonna continue the GUI set up through the browser. So grab your IP and connect to it on this page. And then from here, you're gonna set your default passwords, and then we'll go through some basic 
uh, setups and configurations and kind of show off some of the new features in here that I don't think PFSense has or I haven't actually explored just yet. So let's just set up a generic password here. Okay. Once you get the password configured correctly, we'll be able to set up our firewall. So we'll just, since this is a quick tutorial location, we're located on this side of the world. You know, and it sets our time zone up. It is that late, actually. Uh, let's navigate through the rest of this. I have an existing serial. I don't have serial. I'd like to migrate. Um, you don't want to register now because, you know, there's a trial. If you skip register, read this, you're going to miss out some features that aren't expected. Synchro um, synchronization of security can't be installed. Backups can't be taken. Maintenance features may not function. So it is probably good to register after you're done with your testing. Um, Opt-in. We're actually going to do most of this setup on our own and not have it do it through it here. So let's go ahead and hit skip for now. So finish the basic setups. And with that, we're good to go on that section. All right, once the device reboots, we wanna go ahead and log in back in and then we're gonna to check to see if we can connect to it. We should be able to connect to it at this point. Wanna make sure it says finishing, finishing. And yes, we are finished. Now it's gonna take us through the rest of this wizard. We're gonna kind of go through it. I don't believe I want to say username was admin and then our password we just created now we will always make sure to disable the admin account create a different admin account and go from there all right let's expand on this and just noting it is important to have a security key because it's in case of backups or anything that you need this is very important so if you're going to go ahead and create it and save this somewhere off of this location so if you have a password manager definitely use that if you want to hide this in like three different storage devices, encrypt and change the password, you are more than free and welcome to that part of the learning process for exactly what we want to do with this. So normally I would advise creating a security key, but just for this, this is a testing video, we're not going to actually use the security key. Um, but in the future, definitely, if we're switching over, we're going to have this created and then just copy this over to a different location. So for now, let's go ahead and skip for now. Um, you can manage this to the Sophus Central application if you if your ecosystem already includes that so that's something to take in mind so we'll go ahead and hit no for that all right so now we are on our default page let's just make this a little bit bigger so everyone can see and should be able to see some data here so we have users networks firewall incidents systems you can see everything way easier on here honestly i kind of like it more than i do pf since you know don't say it to anybody it might just also be that we haven't used pf since besides setting up some firewalls and stuff like that so we're gonna go through a couple of the op options here. There's plenty of videos already on YouTube about each one of these. I might make a future video and post that somewhere in link as a playlist for the IT channels of different um, firewalls we're gonna set up down the line, just kind of see what works in the home lab. So let's get started. Keep brief for most of these and then uh, we'll kind of see what you guys like and what you need from here. All right, so one of the key things here that you can do is if we go through administration, you can see your license info, um, when you connect that to your account with uh, Sophus itself directly and device access. This is where you can see what networks can access what um, specific either URLs or um, ports that you have on your system through Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in your LAN, you kind of are replicating what's at home. If you want to block everything on your Wi-Fi where you're using one firewall for your home network, one for your personal network, you can set that up through here. You can see that you can have SSL VPN going through a DM, DMZ zone. Um, HTTPS works on your LAN. You can even block that from working on, on Wi-Fi devices connected to it. And most of this can be managed. And most of this can be configured through here. Or if you actually go to the network on the side here, you can see and configure that through your actual networks here. Um, what we're going to actually focus on and noticing that we have two ports. Those are two ports that we connected through Poxmox to allow it to have two networks, one coming in, one coming out. Uh, one is given through our current firewall and then the other one's what we kind of set up for the routing to our other devices. If we were to say we this actually had like, I think we do have an extra port on our server, could connect and just jump a firewall into it and just set a whole guest network on its own firewall within a different firewall. Now it might have some delay in traffic, but if this is a guest network, then we shouldn't really rely on having too many issues from other users connecting. And we can also, from this network page and interfaces, we can go ahead and drop down, add, add some VLANs, some lags, some uh, extra bridges. If we were looking to add different networks, and if we go inside of our port, we can fine tune 
how the settings exactly are. Either we give it a static IP, change the name, uh, set a different uh, IPv6 configuration, change network speed, all that, even the port, uh, the link mode, the M MTU if needed. A lot of this you wouldn't normally change, but if you want to tinker as much as possible, so you do have the functionality of being as granular as possible within your own network. So a lot of the also what you can do through your firewall, you can learn through the high two guys at the top here, logger and help. They actually have a wide array of documentation on a lot of things that normal use cases that individuals have. Um, we're not going to go too detailed into that as again, as this is an introductory video of how to set this up by Proxmox, so you don't have to actually get a different device, how to just kind of set this up in your home environment. So we've done a couple of networking, the admin stuff, getting it set up and up and running. Now we're going to take a look at some of the firewall rules and some uh, basics of what you can do. I don't want this. I don't want this video getting as longer than it needs to be. Um, if there is a, a, a desire for more content on it, then we can always make this a playlist out of it. All right, so let's get into our rules and policy. This is where you're going to manage all the traffic coming in and out of your network. Uh, we're not going to actually customize a lot of this because a lot of this is going to be far more intrusive in your network. So it's always good to know that when you're setting a firewall rules, it's top down. So it's going to verify if A is, if the condition A is met, let's do this. If this is done, then it's going to move to the second line and then just follow through one by one as it matches everything. So what you want to do is when you're creating your rules, always just kind of visualize how you want it to work because you could create a rule that blocks one traffic that blocks a specific port but then it could block it to the entire range of networks as opposed to just if you want to tackle that to the very last row so really carefully anytime you have a network issue make sure you're watching how you're configuring your firewall rules and just creating small basic ones for each location one by one and verifying it's not over it's not overshadowing your entire network and might bring it down worst case scenario then you have to delete your entire rules as you can see here you can click multiples and hit delete from here, or you can hit add. You can hit disable rules if needed. So your firewall rule, if you've ever worked with networking, this is very simple. If you haven't, this is basically a playground for you to test, set up maybe three devices that you have connected to this, and then just kind of um, push the VLAN or network to it and allow you to configure and learn from that. Besides just setting up rules, you can actually scan the websites you're actually going to and, and doing that all via rules itself, or you can have applications installed through here. So you can check your application list, very similar to what you have on PFSense. You can just install your applications, copy that over, create an email for reporting and rules to go out, web servers, advanced protections. So a lot of the different things, especially creating a VPN where your entire network is going through a VPN will benefit you in learning how to do so. I would say the best course of action is go through each one of these and tackle a specific new task and then kind of develop your skill sets from there. Because at the end of the day, it might be some zero day protection. You have nothing you have no knowledge about and you want to test it out. Your best bet is to come in here, run the process, use your how to guides, use some YouTube guides. Uh, we're going to kind of develop this over the month. The rest of the month probably have another video of how we can configure this to kind of scan our network, scan the websites we use to scan specific devices and kind of segment our IoT devices from our video game consoles to computer consoles and any other devices in the home that each network has its own specific firewall rules and ports blocked on it and making it more secure as needed. So in the future, there's probably going to be some more videos specifically towards this, but if there's something specifically that you're interested in and want to kind of see and learn with me about, then just let me know in the comments below. And we might just add, as I said, add a playlist for this. So if you like the video, thank you for watching. Comment, like below, let me know if there's something you think we should change, improve about, and if there's something specific about firewalls you want to learn about. I'm learning right now, so as you can see, this is going to be a learning environment for everyone. And then uh, if there's something specific I need to know or don't know about this, you know, in the future, it might be a video we can make about it or just jump in the live stream. We can go from there. As always, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.